Hey what's up, today I want to install Windows 3.1 onto an SD card for one of my old computers and I'm going to show how to do that. These SD cards are something I like to use as an alternative to the ancient hard drives in these old computers. This is the original 386 I had when I was a kid, not just like a 386 with a matching case, like this is the exact one that I played all those years ago. The hard drive in it still works and everything. But this hard drive is getting old and maxed out, and I want to use an alternative in the form of a modern solid state solution. The way to do that is to use one of these IDE to SD converters. These are one of my favorite modern computer inventions. I use these in like every single one of my old computers that I have because they're just so reliable, so much better than Compact Flash or any other alternative. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up today. Alright, to do this, I recommend you get Windows 3.1 from the Internet Archive or from WinWorld PC or from anywhere that's got it archived and open each of the disks up with whatever program you have that can open up like a Win uh, or a .img, .imf file, any of those programs and you can extract every single bit of the content of the Windows 3.1 disks into one single folder like I'm doing right now. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you can call it, um, you know, I'm just going to call it new folder, I guess. Uh, you can call it Windows, you can call it Win Setup, or whatever you want. That's probably what I'm going to call it later on. But yeah, eventually you just need somewhere to copy these contents. And uh, do that for all six of the disks. Once everything is copied, move it into your folder and rename it. I just called mine Win Setup. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, that's where mine is right now. And yeah, here's all the files. Make sure it's like 460 something. I can't remember. It's like 460 something. Just make sure it's around there. <laughs> it should be good. And uh, yeah, you just run setup when this is in your 386. Like, like go to the directory and run setup. It'll install everything like at once. All right, I'm going to enter the directory I just added, which is win setup and run setup. I'm going to go with the custom option. Windows will install right away without needing to insert any disks. The process is slow on a 386, but it's a lot of fun. I just sat back and cranked up some Doom MIDIs while Windows installed. I love how this setup includes a tutorial to teach people how to use a mouse in Windows, since it was a pretty new thing back then. Once it was up and ready to go, I slowly began customizing it the way I like it. Changing the color scheme, putting it in tile arrangement with four quadrants, adding all the games I had on my old hard drive and giving them the same icons. I also installed a lot of essentials like Ski Free, Microsoft Arcade, SimCity, and After Dark. In my opinion, you haven't fully installed Windows 3.1 until you set up After Dark. Let me know what other Windows 3.1 games or programs I should get. This computer has a Sound Blaster Pro 2, and now I just need to tell Windows where the drivers are for this card, in order to get sound in Windows. Interestingly, the MIDI playback in OPL on this card sounds very different to the one on my Sound Blaster 16 for some reason. The Sound Blaster Pro 2 is an amazing card though. It's probably the best sounding OPL3 card and as someone who loves adlib tunes, I think it's perfect. The only downside is that it has no MPU 401 capability so I can't hook up any MIDI devices to it. Eventually I want to gather all the programs I had on my original 386 desktop and restore the desktop to look exactly like it did here, with all the same icons. That would be a fun side project. Until then, I can now enjoy all the charms of this extremely old version of Windows, the first GUI I ever used. It's amazing how different Windows 3.1 is to every version that came after. This predates the start menu and uses the old program manager. The right click function which displays the drop down options on later windows also doesn't exist and you had to go to file for that. You will use the run option a lot more often in this than in 95 or later. I actually learned how to do everything entirely with the keyboard when I was a kid, because at my setup at the office, I only had the keyboard and no mouse. It involved using Alt very often. My 386 booted right to Windows 3.1 back then, so I saw the screen every time I turned it on, and I love this old Windows logo and the vintage splash screen. It's a shame modern versions of Windows don't have the cool splash screens and the startup music anymore. The 90s were a simpler time, and I was thoroughly entertained by the simplest things. I used to love watching the screensavers in After Dark, like Starry Night, Mountains, Marbles, Flying Toasters, Earth, and Nocturnes. 
Those were some of my favorites, and I love how slow they run on the 386. These all run so much faster on my 486, though. I used to sit back and watch these go by. I love watching the fish and the swans and the lightning and hearing the sounds come through the PC speaker was so soothing. Most of the stuff here I actually remember from the 486 which we also had at the time with Windows 3.1, and when played on the 386 they run very slow. But I have so many fond memories of using all kinds of fun and obscure software, like click and play here. I had these two weird games called Depth and Gunship that were made in that program. It was like a game maker software where you can make any simple game using the tools they provide. There was also Winroids, which was an Asteroids clone for Windows with some awesome music. This one is called Flaps, and it runs insanely slow on here. This was another game I remember from the 486, and it's kind of amazing how much of a difference in speed there is between the 486 and 386. Another program that really brings me back is EGA Coloring Book. I remember loving this back at the office. It's so cool to see how many colors they can come up with in EGA just by using dithering. Of course, you can't talk about Windows without mentioning Solitaire. You know, to this day I've never beaten Solitaire before. I enjoy it, but I just suck at it. I remember the first time seeing my mom beat the game, and it blew my mind the way the cards just cascade down. There was this program I used to have called Talking Teacher, and every time I ran it, it scared the shit out of me because it played through the PC speaker and you couldn't turn it down or off. When I was in elementary school, I was in chess club, and I sucked at the game, but I loved playing chess here against the computer. I'm so bad that even a 386 can beat me in 7 moves though. This computer just carries so many memories and it's so nice to still have it with me in fully functioning condition. So yeah, that's just another video involving this 386 and Windows 3.1. I haven't made a video on this computer in like 4 years and it's nice to give it some spotlight again. It's been a while since I made anything vintage computer related really and it's really nice to come back to that. The 386 and 486 are my favorite periods of computer history and I'm very glad that my original 386 still works. This computer has been with me my whole life, and I hope it keeps going for many more years. And Windows 3.1 is still my favorite Windows, despite the fact that it's a pain in the ass to use today. It's the first GUI I ever used in my life, and this video has given me an excuse to install it on a 386 for my first time. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed this little Windows throwback, it was fun to make. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.